the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom. Now and ever to the age of all ages, amen. Welcome back, everyone, uh, to our last and final uh, session in studying the blessed book of the Song of Solomon. Um, if uh, you haven't uh, joined us earlier, then I encourage you to watch the previous lectures so that you can get the most benefit out of uh, the series. <clears throat> so we're uh, concluding chapter seven and then following with the last chapter in uh, chapter eight. So last time we see the transformation in the bride um, and the groom praises her for her beauty um, from head to toe and toe to head. Um, and there's a lot of symbols and types and analogies here. Um, and now after this, we can we see that she continues to say, I am my beloved and, uh, and before she said, my beloved is mine. And now she said, his desire is for me. Um, here are just some previous uh, verses that we um, studied um, and where to find them in, in the lecture. So when she says, I am my beloved, you can find that in chapter two and chapter six. And then she also says, his left hand is under my head and his right hand embraces me. These are some of the um, most memorable verses and uh, deeply spiritual as well. Um, His Holiness Pope Shenouda the third of blessed memory uh, takes considerable time on a lot of these verses. Um, <clears throat> so th this is just for uh, your reference. But other than that, we'll continue on. Um, she says at the end of chapter seven, come my beloved, let us go to the countryside. Let us spend the night in the villages. Let us go early to the vineyards to see if the vines have budded, if their blossoms have opened, and if the pomegranates are in bloom, there I will give you my love. <clears throat> so this reminds us of several things. When uh, she cries, let us go um, to different places, different villages, uh, the father says this reminds us of um, traveling from place to place as sojourners and pilgrims in this world. It's important to be with him um, regardless of where we are until we live with him forever in paradise. Um, so that's why St. Peter says, um, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims um, of the world, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Um, and then she says, let's go early. Um, this is the wisdom of the Holy Spirit um, in, inflamed in the believer who says, early will I seek you uh, in, in the first hour of the Egbeya, which we pray. Um, and then she says, well, I... Now that I've been transformed and I'm serving others so that they may be transformed as well, let's follow up on, on the service. Um, <clears throat> just like St. Paul also proclaimed um, in, in Acts to, to the apostles saying, Let, let's go back and visit our brethren in every city that we have already preached the word and see how they're doing. She already spoke to a lot of the people. She already, uh, here the vineyards, again, this, uh, this again is a symbol of uh, the transformation that, uh, or the church itself, as we'll see um, in, in the following um, slides. <clears throat> um, so she, again, she's following up on the service. She's not being lazy, um, and she's a fellow worker of God's field. Um, like uh, St. Paul says, you are God's field. You are God's vineyard. You are God's uh, building. Um, so then um, she... Uh, refers to the mandrake, mandrakes, um, which you can find in Genesis 30, where Leah and Rachel were fighting over the mandrakes, um, which for some reason, maybe it's aphrodisiac or it has relation to bearing children, right? So they were arguing this so that they could have uh, children. And Leah had the mandrakes, her son brought them to her, and she had another son after this. Um, <clears throat> so here it talks about the fruitfulness. Right? The mandrakes give off fragrance because the, the aroma of Christ. At our, at our gates, at the doors of the church, are pleasant fruits, all manner new and old. Um, this new and old reminds us also of the Lord Christ who says, Every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out of his treasure uh, things new and old. Right? Um, the faith of the church is ancient, right? but the promises of God are new every morning. Right? So, so living the spiritual life, it's both new because it feels new to the believer, but old because there's nothing new under the sun. 
the, the Orthodox faith does not change. Um, yet it feels new every day to the believer because they rejoice and, and uh, uh, have um, newfound love for God every day and every minute they're with him. That's how heaven will be as well. Um, <clears throat> so in the beginning of chapter 8, uh, the bride continues saying, oh, that you are like my brother. Of course, this is not to be taken literally, as we've said from the very beginning. But here the fathers say this, this, is, this is the desire for us to have God with us and to take flesh, right? So this is the prophecy of incarnation. As St. Athanasius, the professor of the incarnation says, he says, in the meaning of that prayer is that you are like, humanity and would take on human nature for our sake right after all it was god who set up times and seasons and he knows our needs better than we do he came at the very perfect time to take flesh he comes at the very perfect time in my life to help me um since he loves us he exhorts us to do the right things at the right time so that we may be healed thus when the appropriate time had come the father sent the son just as he promised um and then we lead him we don't lead him, he leads us, but bring to the house of my, I, I need you in my family, in my congregation, in my church, because the church is nothing without you, right? Um, and and this is the, the Old Testament church who used to instruct me, now is the New Testament church because Christ is in the midst. Um, see the beauty of, of, of this phrase, of course, we can't take it literally, it makes no sense. Um, then, uh, again, the same contemplation on the comparison of the Church of the Old and the Church of the New. Um, uh, the proclamation, uh, which was also mentioned in previous ch chapters, I think it was chapter 6, who is this um, coming up from the wilderness, leaning on her beloved? Um, who is this? Of course, <laughs> it's Christ. Um, but not only Christ, those who are like him. As uh, Pope Shenouda of Blessed Memory says, in her holiness, chastity, zeal, worship, and love for God and others, the church, the bride, right, has become an object of the astonishment of heaven. The angels are saying, who is this? Who is this beloved of, of the Lord? Um, <clears throat> uh, they look at her and say, how beautiful, how sublime, how patient, how ideal. We've never seen such a thing. Who is this coming out of the wilderness? Why out of the wilderness? Because there is no fruitfulness. There is no... Um, sustenance, there is no still waters without Christ. Um, but And in the world, the church is, is, is a paradise in the middle of wilderness. Um, even in the book of Revelation and the book of Deuteronomy, right? Um, there is blessing within the midst of tribulation, right? Um, <clears throat> sorry for the typo there at, at the bottom. Um, but like His, His Holiness, Pope Shenouda continues again, he says, they sanctified the wilderness with their life and prayers. So here he is relating to the saints of the wilderness, which are our fathers, the monks, the mothers, the nuns, right? They sanctified the wilderness with their, like Elijah the prophet right? and Moses the prophet. They transformed the wilderness, which is supposed to be dry and arid and lifeless, into paradise with their, with their prayers. And it, they transformed it into second heaven. Um, attracting others to enter the wilderness that they might find sustenance. Um, so uh, this is the beauty of the one who loves the beloved. Um, moving on, uh, again, we can't go through every example, every uh, symbol, because uh, a lot of it is repeated. But then um, the description here, she's leaning on her beloved. What does this mean? Uh, St. Ambrose says, she ascends leaning on the word of God. She depends on him. He is our pillar. He, uh, he is our foundation. For those who are more, more perfect recline upon Christ, just as St. John also reclined at Jesus' bosom on the night of the Last Supper. So then she either rested in Christ or reclined upon him, or even since I'm speaking of the marriage, as if already given into the power of Christ, she was led to the bridal couch by the bridegroom. So this is the intimacy. This is the, the, the fruit of the, the bride of Christ. Um, just uh, to, to make a note, some translations add radiant in white um, uh, to show that 
uh, like the fathers say that this is a sign of the renewal and transformation and transfiguration um, because she becomes bright and white like him. Remember in the past, she describes him as white and red, right? Um, white for purity, red for uh, the, um, the sacrifice, the blood of Christ. Um, <clears throat> so now they're saying she's white like him, <laughs> of course. Uh, so then she says, set me as a seal upon your heart, a seal upon your arm. Um, there's much that can be said about this, but St. Ambrose writes, uh, set me as a seal upon your heart so that your faith may shine forth in the fullness of the sacrament in, inside. Let your works also shine. Uh, and let's set forth the image of God in whose image you were made. Let no persecution lessen your love, which cannot be quenched. Um, so even though we're in the wilderness, we're still filled with, with radiance. Christ is the seal on the forehead and seal in the heart. So in our thoughts, in our emotions, in our actions, in our arm. Um, uh, so that's why he says, in the heart that we may always love him. And on sign on the arm that we may always do his work. Therefore, let his image, which sanctifies us from head to toe, shine forth in our procession of faith. Uh, sorry, profession of faith. Let it shine forth in our love, in our emotions, in our heart. Let it shine forth in our works, in our arm and deeds, so that if possible, all his beauty may be represented in us. We can become Christ-like in our deeds, in our words, in our thoughts, and our emotions. Uh, then, um, description of love again. Love is as strong as death. Uh, another very important uh, verse to remember, because we can contemplate on this uh, for God knows how long. Um, again, St. Ambrose says, so Christ is our love, as God is love in First John, right? Good is love since it has offered itself to death for transgressions. Good is love, which has forgiven sins. And so let our soul clothe itself with love, We're covered with Christ, with the love of Christ. And, and love of a kind that is strong as death, for just as death is the end of sins, right? So also love is the end of sins, because one who loves the Lord stops sin. Um, so that's why uh, saying death is the end, right? The, the end of, of the life of the flesh, but not the life of the spirit. Love is the end of, of sin, but not the end of doing good. <clears throat> St. Augustine, the disciple of St. Ambrose also says, love is rightly said to be strong as death, either because no one overcomes it, because no one can overcome death. Once you die, you die, that's it. <laughs> Except for the resurrection of Christ, right? Or because in this life the measure of love is unto death, as the Lord said, greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends, right? So this is the epitome of love is to die for someone. Um, or also, when you die, you separate the flesh from the spirit. So love also separates um, the, the holy person from the sinful life, as we just explained. Um, just a couple more slides and we'll be done. Um, uh, just bits and pieces from the last few verses. She says, I became in his eyes as one who had found peace. Um, we explained this, I think, in the first or second lecture when we talked about the Shulamite, which that word is very similar to Solomon, which means peace, right? So she became peaceful because she took his peace. Like we say, O King of Peace, grant us your peace, for you have given us all things. Um, and then she said, Solomon, the king, right, um, of peace, uh, Jerusalem, right, all of this is reflecting upon peace, had a vineyard, which is the church, as um, St. Cyril says down here, um, at Baal Haman, which means where the believers are, right? Um, he leased the vineyard to vine dressers or to keepers, leased the vine dressers right? Uh, so, sorry, at least the vineyard to vine dressers. This is the parable of the vine dressers that the Lord himself gave. Um, see how beautiful scripture is where it unites everything and everything is interwoven um, in our understanding of Christ. And there's so many beautiful symbols here too. So um, what happened in the parable, the landowner planted a vineyard. The Lord established the church. And set a hedge around it, dug a wine press. He, he, he perfected it and he prepared everything. 
He gave us the apostles. He gave us the scriptures. He gave us the holy tradition. He gave us sacraments. And then he gave it to the servants, the apostles and their disciples. Uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to send to heaven, go to far country, take care of it. Right. Um, so the same thing here. And the, the <laughs> hundreds of years before, um, in, in King Solomon had a vision through the Holy Spirit of, of the same idea here. Um, how beautiful. Last uh, couple of verses, the companions, listen for your voice. Uh, all of us are waiting to hear the voice of our beloved, saying, come, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. We all hear his voice. We wait to hear his voice in our life um, uh, to direct us here, but also to, to accept us there, right? Um, that's why she says, let me hear it. We all want to hear his voice. Um, then she says, oh, come, Lord Jesus. If you look at the end of Scripture, Maran Atha, the, the last few verses of Revelation, we're asking God to come. Thy kingdom come, but you come to me. Um, or take me to be with yourself. Make haste, my beloved, and be like a gazelle or a young stag. Um, come quickly. <laughs> this world is nothing without you. Um, and even if I get everything in this world, it's nothing because I don't have you. So make haste and, and come like um, a, a deer or a, like a gazelle. Uh, St. Ambrose again says she, she urges the bridegroom to flee or to come because although she is earthly, she can follow him. So go and, and I'll follow. <laughs> um, prepare the way for me and, and I'm right behind you. She says this so that she may be like the young deer that escapes the nets. Um, very limber and, and, and able to avoid the traps um, for she desires also to flee this world and to fly, to flee and to fly, and like this uh, phrase that St. Ambrose gets. So um, basically that's the all that we have uh, for, for this blessed book. I hope it has inspired you to read it on your own. Again, I just remind you to take uh, care um, when you read and how you read and who um, you allow to read, like if you're a parent or a servant, the, the younger uh, children or those who are still um, not mature in the Christian faith to understand the symbols and the typology and the depth might get tripped up from a lot of um, the, the things that are mentioned. Uh, so that's why I would encourage to maybe follow a, a study like this instead of reading um, on your own. May God give us grace and help us to continue to open up the scriptures in our minds and our hearts until we follow him who has opened he heaven for us and ex experience a taste of heaven here that we may live with our beloved forever. Glory be to him now and forever into the age while we visit.